So I recently returned from a book signing tour, and my two-year-old daughter runs up to me super excited, and she looks me in the eye and goes, Daddy, don't be a Minosaurus. <laughs> so keep that image of this fictitious Minosaurus in the back of your mind for the next 18 minutes. But on another trip, I was really honored to be invited to South Africa. And one of the other speakers there was the great Nelson Mandela. And so during his amazing speech, he mentioned a quote from Maya Angelou. that went something like this. In life, people will forget what you said. They'll forget what you did. But they'll never forget how you made them feel. So I sat there in awe and thought to myself, that's just wrong. <laughs> In the digital age, that is not correct. But who am I to question that? So for the next four years, my team and I conducted extensive research around how are people going to remember all of us in this digital age? And whether it was our interviews with a CEO or a soccer mom, or a senator, or a school teacher, everyone had three pressing questions, three very important questions. And those questions were, in this crazy hyper-connected world, how do I achieve my best life, leadership, and legacy? Life, leadership, legacy. Now historically, if you were to be made into a traditional postage stamp, you had to do something amazing. You had to be a celebrity or do something great or do both. But the shift that we've seen is that all of us today are many digital celebrities. We're all leaving a digital stamp today, tomorrow, five years from now, 50 years, 500 years from now. So the question was, what exactly is this digital stamp comprised of? And it turns out it's comprised of two things. It's comprised of digital footprints, and it's comprised of digital shadows. Now, your digital footprint is anything that you upload about yourself. That's a text, a tweet, a post. So you somewhat have control over your digital footprint. But the more important part of that equation is your digital shadow. That's what others post about you online. And it might be your offline activity or your online activity. Yes, it might be your offline activity. That's why in 2008 I wrote in the book, What Happens in Vegas Stays on YouTube. <laughs> so if we have this monumental shift to where we're all creating a digital stamp, what do the best digital leaders today do to leave their best stamp, to lead their best life, legacy, and leadership? So it turns out they all practice and embrace five habits, five simple habits. And conveniently enough, it forms the acronym of STAMP. And so those five habits are simple. It's not about adding stuff to our lives. It's about taking away. T is for true. You got to follow your passions. Then success will follow. A is for act. Nothing happens without action. We need to take that first step. M is for map. We need to have a firm destination in mind but we also need to be flexible in our path on how we get to that destination. And lastly, P is for people. We need to blanket ourselves with the right people, both offline and also online. So let's start with the first one, S for simple. So please, by a show of hands, how many of you think you're pretty good at multitasking? I've got my hand raised. Okay, I just made liars out of all of us. It turns out in our research, the neuroscience shows that actually human beings can't multitask. We can't parallel process two creative tasks at once like a, like a computer can. Instead, we switch between tasks. So we're not really multitasking, we're just switching between tasks. And that switch has a cost in efficiency as our brain tries to determine if we're multitasking on three different creative tasks, which one's the most important, which one should I switch to, which one should I be working on? So ironically enough, we're doing the exact opposite of what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to leave this great digital stamp, so we think we need to do more. We need to beat Father Time, yet Father Time is undefeated. 
And so we do that multitasking. We're actually making ourselves less efficient. We're doing the exact opposite of what we're trying to do. How bad is it? Your IQ drops in the moment 10 points when you're multitasking. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't afford to give up 10 points off my IQ. <laughs> the other thing, if you look at that, that's the equivalent of not sleeping for 36 hours, which has twice the effect of smoking marijuana. Now, I don't want you to leave those doors today going, that was the greatest TED Talk ever. He told us, go smoke some pot. No, I want you to use that as a mnemonic to remind yourselves when you catch yourself multitasking, it's a good mnemonic to remember you're actually being less efficient. And I can say that because I'm a recovering multitasker. <laughs> so let's look at T. This is for true. Now, a lot of leadership books, they talk about envision your funeral and what do you want people to say about you at your funeral, what you want your legacy to be. Well, we don't have to wait for our funeral in this day and age because we can just Google ourselves to figure out what people are saying about us. And I won't ask you to raise your hands about if you've Googled yourself. It's called a vanity search, and we've all done it. But if you'll entertain me for a second, I'll pull out your mobile devices. And some of you go and pull it out. I never put it away. <laughs> but if you can, for the next 30 seconds, I want you to write out what you want your digital stamp to be. What do you want people to find on Google this afternoon, tomorrow, five years, 50 years, 500 years from now? What's the mark on this world that you want to leave starting today? So if you would, for the next 30 seconds, type that out. You can send it to me so that's out there in the public domain. I'm equal man across the board. And so equal man at Twitter, equal man Gmail, Yahoo. Or if you're not, as you can see, I'm not wearing tights or a cape, but I do have a $10 T-shirt. <laughs> but if you can... Send it to your mom, your dad, whatever you're comfortable with, but just take the next 30 seconds. I'm going to be quiet because I just told you you can't multitask. Okay, as you finish that up, I'm going to tell a quick story. So one of the people we looked at was a turnaround CEO. We wanted to know how she was successful at going into companies and turning them around and making them successful. And she looked at us after we questioned her and badgered her for about 30 minutes and said, what I'm going to tell you is so simple, it's laughable. What I do is I go into the company and I ask them for, I want a list of your 60 best customers and your 60 best clients. And then I go visit those customers and clients face to face and ask them two very simple questions. I ask them, what do you buy from us and why do you buy from us? A trend emerges, I go back to the office and I hyper-focus all of our activity around that what and the why. So what I want you to do with the digital stamp that you wrote out, or we can call this your digital compass, is I want you for the next 10 days to act like that turnaround CEO and ask yourself, what do I do that makes me happy? And why does it make me happy? And then I want you to adjust that 140 character or less digital stamp or digital compass so that you have that. Once you have that, that's something you can reference whenever you're faced with a tough decision. It'll make that decision much easier. It's setting the path on where you want to wind up. Wind up. What do you want your stamp in life to be? All right, so now let's move on to A for act. Nothing happens without action. So what I want to talk about is we need to start focusing on output and not focus on the throughput. So how many of you woke up this morning and within 10 minutes were interacting with your mobile device? Okay, anyone that doesn't have their hand ups lying <laughs> or their battery was dead or they dropped their phone in the water or something. <laughs> But what we started to do is we started to engage in throughput. What throughput looks like is that we answer texts and tweets and emails all day. And we're exhausted. We work super hard. At the end of the day, we worked hard and we're exhausted. Yet we have nothing to show for. We didn't produce anything. We have no output. And so we want to hyper-focus on that output. And so a lot of us look at trying to do everything. 
And if you look at the word everything, what you need to do is most of us focus on the every. And what we need to focus is on the thing. What are the things that actually change this world? So a quick story about how meaningless throughput is, is that when I was the head of marketing at TravelZoo, we were fortunate to be one of the top performing stocks on the NASDAQ. So it was a crazy time. I was super stressed, and I needed a break. So I needed to take a vacation. But I knew if I took a vacation that I'd have 1,000 emails during the course of that vacation. And what had happened is I'd fall in the trap that many of us do. These digital tools are designed to work for us, but yet I found myself working for the digital tool, email. And so I wanted to flip the script. So what I decided to do is I'm going to take that vacation, and I made my out-of-office reply look like it was coming from the server. So it said, thank you for your email. This mailbox is temporarily full. If your email is important, please resend it on October the 1st. That's when I was returning. So I have this amazing vacation. I come back. Sure enough, I have 1,247 emails in my inbox. And I hit control, alternate, delete. There we go. Deleted all the emails. So then I sweated it out for two or three days, waiting for, the, <laughs> waiting for the world to end. But we know the story. The world did not end. Eight people thought it was important enough to resend me the email. <laughs> that is how little throughput matters. So say yes to output, no to throughput. Output, write that screenplay. Design that fashion line. Start that nonprofit. The easiest way to do that is tomorrow morning, wake up, write down two things of output that you're going to get done before you do anything else, before you touch your device. Now, let's look at M for map. We need to have a firm destination in mind, but we need to be flexible in our path and how we get there. So all of us are going to be pioneers. We're going to be digital pioneers. And as pioneers, we need to understand that we're going to get pushback. And instead of getting frustrated, embrace that as a signal that I'm pioneering. That's why they're pushing back. I'm doing something that they've never seen before. Digital pioneers don't use old maps to get to new destinations. So understand as a pioneer, you're going to get that pushback. And you need to embrace that pushback. And the great example, the most flexible story that's well known is Steve Jobs' story. So he had a firm destination. He wanted to put a dent in the universe. He wanted to create a company that changed people's lives. And when he did that, at the age of 30, the Apple board forced him out of the company that he started. And he went on to start Next Computers and also become the CEO of Pixar. And so when he returned, to Apple, he was a better leader. And at the time of his passing, Apple had the largest market cap in the world of any company. So he was flexible in his path on how he got there, but he's firm in his destination. And we need to understand those hurdles are there for a reason. They're to keep everybody else out. They're not to keep us out. And there's a great term I heard the other day. So in this digital world, we're not gonna get it right the first time. So we need to fail fast, we need to fail forward, we need to fail better. So I heard a great term, it's all about being flossom. <laughs> so it's through our flaws that we can actually showcase how awesome we are. And so it's taking that proverbial digital lemonade, digital lemons, and making that digital lemonade. So now we're on the last piece, the most important one, P is for people. Now, we need to build our network before we actually need our network, but most of us do the opposite. We ask for a favor from our network before we've actually built that relationship, whether it's offline or online. But as we look online, we actually need to do the opposite of what we're all doing. A lot of us ask, how can I get you to follow me? How can I get you to like me? How can I get you to view a video? When we need to ask the exact opposite question, how can I give you something? Once you give, you will get. You'll get more followers than you can ever imagine once you start to give. 
You've heard of pay it forward? This is all about posting it forward in the online world. So a quick example, when I sat down to write, which was going to become the most viewed video about social media in the world, I didn't ask the question, what am I going to get from writing this and producing this? I asked, what can I give the audience of value? And that way, both parties win. So you need to get in order to give. And I'd be remiss, I'm a writer, so I had to write, I'm not a speaker, so I'm a writer, so I had to write something down here today. And so I wrote a little poem called Hashtag Digital Stamp. As a youth with little a plan, my dad oft asked, what footprints are you going to leave in the sand? It meant little then, but with time, this became a very motivating line. If up to me, what will be? my ultimate legacy. Social media search, mobile and more, leave digital footprints on the floor. Digital shadows, if you will, fulfilling all that I fulfill, following all that I fulfill. My grandchildren and great grandchildren, what will they see and think of me? What is my digital legacy? Will they see that I pursued my dream or that I settled for something in between? Digital footprints remain for all time, so I can't commit the ultimate crime. What is that crime you say? It is, of course, not seizing the day. My legacy, you see, is truly up to me. Life is not a race. Above all, it's about making the world a better place. That's my view, but now I hand the ball off to you. So my question to you is, what is you gonna be your digital stamp today? Is it going to inspire people today, tomorrow, five years, 50 years, 500 years from now? Are you going to practice those five tips that all digital leaders and habits that they embrace, being simple, true, act, map, and blanking yourself with the right people, both offline and online? And so that circles us back to the quote that we started off with. In life, people will remember what you said. They will remember what you did. But the greatness that is Nelson Mandela, Maya Angelou, they got the most important part right. In life, it's really all about who are you going to uplift and how are you going to make people feel. Whether that's through a text or more importantly, whether it's through touch the human touch. These digital tools aren't there to replace a laugh, a smile, or a kiss. Or as my daughter would say, don't be a Minosaurus. Thank you.